If you're like me and don't like fumbling around with original scroll saw packaging because it's hard to keep them labeled or they're hard to store like this, I've got a great solution for you. Hi, I'm Stephanie and welcome to Crafting in the Rain. Using these plastic test tubes that I found on Amazon, I'm gonna show you how I now store all of my scroll saw blades and I think you might like it too. You will find a list of all the supplies and materials that I used in the description, including a link to where you can go get the free pattern for this project. I prepped two pieces of quarter inch plywood with a layer of contact paper, and then I sprayed adhesive to both sides and sandwiched them together. Now I'm spraying the back of the pattern pieces, and I have a layer of contact paper on the top of this piece of wood also. And now the pattern pieces go on. So this is called a stack cut. I have two pieces of wood stacked on top of each other. This increases the thickness of the wood that I'm cutting. So right here I'm using a number seven blade. Since shape A and shape B are exactly the same size, I'm just going to cut out shape A in the stack cut and then I'll have two pieces. So that saves me some cutting time. The one downside that can come up with stack cutting is that if you mess up a cut, then you've messed up two pieces instead of just one. But in general, it's a great way to get through a pattern a little bit quicker. You'll also notice as I'm cutting out each of these shapes, the part that I've printed that I'm cutting around, I like to keep that on the left side of the blade. It just feels more comfortable to me. I feel like I can follow the line a little bit better. I don't know if it has anything to do with being right-handed or if it's something else completely. But you can definitely play around with cutting with the pattern on the left side or cutting with the pattern on the right side and see if you have a preference for guiding that blade and how you're able to be the most consistent. Okay, now for this cut here, I need two rectangle pieces, but only the top piece needs to have all of these holes cut out of it. So what I'm going to do is cut the rectangle outline while it is stacked or glued together. Then when I'm done with the outline, I'm going to peel those two pieces apart and cut out each of the holes in just the top layer of wood. Another thing you'll notice that I like to do is if I'm coming into a sharp corner like this and there's a lot of wood around it, then I will do this loop cut and come back around to the corner at a straight line. But then when I get to the end of this line, there's not very much wood left. I'll just continue the straight line off the edge of the wood. I'm now going to peel apart the stacked layers. Here I used a very small flat screwdriver to work as a wedge and get those apart. Sometimes you can just use your fingers or a fingernail or an X-Acto knife blade, anything that you can use to just get a little bit of space in there to pull those apart. Then you're gonna remove the clear contact paper from each layer. For this piece, I don't want to remove the pattern yet because I'm still going to use it to cut out each of these holes that the test tubes will rest in. So I'm going to pry them apart, pull off the contact paper, but still leave the pattern attached to the top for now. Drill a hole into each of those white circles. And then I actually switched the blade that I'm using. I went back to a Flying Dutchman number no. five blade. This will help me be really precise on the circles. And also it's more suited for a quarter inch piece of wood instead of the half inch that I was making were stacked. Just remember to be slow and precise as you work your way around the circles. And you're gonna feel like a total circle pro when you're done cutting out this pattern. Mm -hmm. 
Now the pattern can be removed from this layer and you can give the edges a nice little sanding with a micro zip or with a piece of sandpaper. This is even more important when using plywood like I did here because it's more likely to have teeny little splinters on the edges than when you're working with MDF. I also took a little piece of sandpaper around my finger to get inside each of these holes and just smooth them out a little bit. Now it's time to put it all together. So I'm using some wood glue and just a little piece of paper to help brush it onto the edges. I also have just this little frame in the back just to give myself a sturdy edge to kind of help hold this up as I'm working with it. I'm going to use some painter's tape to hold tight each of these joints as the wood dries. The two side pieces are square, so it doesn't matter which side or which direction they go, um, but you might want to make sure that the grain matches so that they both go up and down or sideways. Reposition the tape if you need to to make sure that it's got a nice tight corner on there. Once all the corners are taped up, you can kind of check them all again to see that they're lined up where you want them, readjust any of the tape if you need to, and then let it dry overnight. When it's all put together, you can stain it or paint it, whatever you'd like to do. I'm actually using some walnut oil because I really liked this light, natural color, and the only stain that I had was really dark, but that would look cool too. I just decided to go with this one. So with the walnut oil, it's pretty similar to a stain. You wipe some on and then buff it off and let it dry. You know, I had to incorporate my Cricut too. So I made little sticker labels to put on the lids of these test tubes. And then I filled them up with all my different scroll saw blades. That way I know exactly where to find what I'm looking for. You could also write directly on the lid with a permanent marker or at the store you can find those little sticker labels in colors or in white so you can label your own any way you like. Pretty and organized. What more could you want? All right, so what do you think? My blades are organized, labeled, easy to store, and they look cute too. Leave me a comment if you want to share the way that you store your scroll saw blades. And I'd also love to hear what kind of finish would you put on your test tube holder? A light color like this? Stain it darker? Paint it? I'd love to know. All right, make sure you like this video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you next time.